Okay, now the multiplication table and subalgebras of um, this algebra here, the algebra of three dimensional space. We have um, to get the full multiplication table of all elements still to compute the products of vectors and by vectors, and this is done here. And, um, So a vector and a bivector, which includes the vector, they anti-commute. So they are the same up to a sign, this negative sign here. So they anti-commute. Always it's chosen here that the vector is included in the bivector. Now if the vector is not included in the bivector, then you get always I3 here, and then you have commutation. So uh, in general, vectors and orthogonal by vectors, vectors and orthogonal by vectors necessarily commute. So commutation relationships depend on orthogonality and on the grades of actors in such products. And that's very good because you just know um, about orthogonality and grades and you can already make computations even without introducing coordinates. So this is a full multiplicative multiplication table of the um, geometric algebra of three-dimensional space. Here are the vectors, the bind vectors, and the tri vector. And when you have this table, it's very useful because every sub-table, uh, which is closed under the geometric product, gives you also a sub-algebra. And we find uh, the table which we had before of two dimensions is a sub-table. Therefore, the algebra of R2 is a subalgebra of R3. And in general, any pair of orthonormal vectors generate, uh, like this algebra, which is four dimensional, a four dimensional subalgebra specific to the plane which is spanned by the two vectors. And regarding subalgebras, having uh, one, the scalar, and the tri vector, this gives us a central subalgebra. Uh, so it commutes everything isomorphic to complex numbers. And in general, any uh, element that squares to minus 1 gives a subalgebra isomorphic to complex numbers. And that's the starting point for generalizing Fourier transformations to Clifford Fourier transformations. And also, wavelets to Clifford wavelets. And we also recognize in the multiplication table the subalgebra of quaternions. And there's another subalgebra, and all the four entities in the subalgebra they commute. This commutes anyway, they commute to as well. And this is uh, the algebra of uh, bicomplex numbers or tessarines, also known under other names, say quaternions, commutative quaternions, or quartan subalgebra. And we can generalize this by taking instead of E1 any unit vector that squares to plus 1, then take uh, U times I3 as this bivector element here and I3, and uh, they are perpendicular. And the last element has the interpretation of the unit tri vector, so we have a geometric interpretation for it, and we, we can generalize this. And so geometric algebra provides a clear and useful geometric interpretation of subalgebras like divine complex numbers. And the knowledge of the geometric interpretation is very good uh, in order to find these algebras in problems which um, you have or in nature and problems which you like to solve. And also it helps you to identify situations where you don't need the full algebra with a huge multiplication table, but when the subalgebra will do and will help to solve your problem. Okay, now something more about the grade structure. Here I've written a general element of this Clifford algebra of three-dimensional space, the vector, by vector, and tri-vector component. And the three components I can write with this index 0, 1, 2, 3 for indicating the grades. And uh, I write them here explicitly again. And so if I only take um, vectors here, then the grade is 1. Here the grade is 2. Here the grade is 3. And the set of each set uh, of k vectors, where k is the number 0, 1, 2, 3, is then uh, written as um, CL upper index k uh, with the signature 3 
And uh, I can use this great uh, extraction, for example, to compute an angle. So I take the uh, bivector part of the geometric product uh, AB, that's the outer product. Then I multiply with the inverse of the um, area element of this plane, which is defined here, divide by the scalar part, which corresponds to the cosine. So this is basically the tangents, and the inverse tangents gives me uh, the angle. And uh, in general, the scalar part of a geometric product of two elements of the algebra is n expressed with a star here. And simply you take the geometric product and extract the scalar part here. And I've written the general scalar part here with all its components. And it's easy to compute from the multiplication table because only in the multiplication table the diagonal entries were scalar. All other entries were not scalar. And therefore, also you have the same indices here from the diagonal of the table. Now, the real version uh, changes uh, the order. And uh, so if I apply the real version to the general element, the bivectors uh, get the negative sign and also the trivector here. And now, if I take the scalar product of a multivector with itself and use the reversion, then I adjust the signs to be all positive, and that's the norm. And so if a multivector is a vector, then the norm is simply the length. And if um, it is um, a combination of scalar and bivector, then the norm uh, is like the modulus and quaternions, or if it's a combination of pseudo scalar and scalar here, it's like the modulus of complex numbers. And uh, with the norm here, I can, for example, compute the area of a parallelogram. And the reversion acts in this context by complex conjugation, so I get m0 plus m1 to 3 squared, or like the quaternion conjugation, so it unifies these operations. Now I talk about how to generalize the inner and outer product because we only have that for um, vectors so far. And let us make an observation. The inner product gives us a scalar. So it goes down from one vector to grade zero scalar. It lowers the rate. And the generalization will be contraction. The outer product raises the grade. I go from grade one uh, to grade one vectors to a grade 2 pi vector. And so that contraction is simply take um, a blade AK from the left and a blade BL from the right and uh, extract from the geometric product the L minus K part. And if L minus K is negative, the result is zero. So all this K on the left uh, and L on the right here. And the dimension, dimension on the left will always be uh, less or equal the dimension on the right. And uh, the right contraction is the opposite. So it's identical, but instead of taking the L minus K part, you take the K minus L part, and um, this uh, is zero if K is less or equal zero. So K must always be less than L. So the factor on the left uh, will be smaller than the factor on the right. Or I think it must be opposite. <laughs> But okay, that, that, that's how it should be. Um, no, no, yeah, the, 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 the factor on the right, this is uh, explained correctly here, has less um, dimension than the factor on the left. So you contract from the right onto something bigger on the left. So both contractions, which are given here only for single blades, can be generalized uh, to um, multi vectors uh, by. Uh, linearity, so they are linear in both factors, so it's quite linear. You see double sums. And the reversion changes uh, the order, and it also changes a uh, left contraction into a right contraction and the other way around. Then the outer product for blades is one may be a bivector, one may be a trivector, any, any kind of blade. I simply take the maximum. Uh, grade part that is possible, so k plus l, and you extract that. And if it is larger than the dimension of the vector space, it's zero. And here I show you um, the outer product applied to, to scalar, scalar, and vector. 
and here, for example, to four vectors, and if the dimension is three, then this must be zero, because there are no four linearly independent vectors in three-dimensional space, um, which is explained here. And the outer product uh, is of great advantage, because the cross product, which we know from three dimensions, exists only in three dimensions, and not in one, two, or four or other dimensions. Now, let me talk about what is called duality. The multiplication table shows you, if you inspect it again, that the multiplication with I3 always changes an element of grade K into an element of grade 3 minus K. So 3 is the dimension of the space. So scalars are changed to tri vectors. Vectors are changed to bi vectors, um, etc. Um, the geometric product of a multi vector and I3 is therefore always a contraction because you get this form 3 minus k. And therefore, instead of writing the uh, general product here, you simply can write the contraction. It's no mistake. It looks nice. And uh, the mapping uh, of multiplication with I3 and changing the grade in this precise way is known as Hodge duality, and it gets a simple star as an upper index, and one use instead of I3, I3 inverse, it's just a convention. And here I've written uh, the result, which you can easily take from the, from the multiplication table. And so for a blade subspace, whenever a blade B contains another blade A as a factor, then this also applies, then the geometric product becomes a contraction. Now, a relation of the outer product and the cross product, which you know well. If you take the um, outer product of E1 and E2, we get E3, and there's also the cross product. And in general, we can take uh, the outer product of two vectors, uh, dualize it, and get the known cross product. And so, uh, by applying uh, I3 again to the cross product here, then we get rid of the dualization, and we know that the outer product of two vectors in three dimensions equals I3 times the vector which is obtained on the conventional cross product. So we can translate results between the two formalisms in, this, in these dimensions. But this cross product is only existent in three dimensions. And the outer product can be used in all dimensions, in general dimensions. Now, um, duality also relates outer product and contraction. Because if I take the outer product of a blade A with another blade B, but with its dual, that is the same like taking the contraction of A with B and dualizing it. And similarly here, uh, I get this uh, relationship. So uh, I can uh, relate, with the help of the duality, the outer product and the contraction. And here, this is written for vectors A and 